how can we detect exoplanets hundreds and thousands of light years away and know their size, density, mass, etc. Yet we can't figure out what is the gravitational anomaly that affects the orbit of Pluto in our own solar system, despite being so close, comparatively. Excellent question. So how do we detect exoplanets hundreds of light years away? So there are a couple of uh, methods of doing it. Uh, one of the methods is to uh, observe a star and try and see if there is any periodic periodic dimming of the star. So if a star is observed to dim regularly in a periodic manner, it, it would indicate that there is something that comes between us and the star between uh, the line of sight. And that is something that indicates a planet. And, deter and depending on how far the star is and how much is the uh, dimming of the light in a periodic manner, we can actually de determine the size of the, or, or yeah, the size of the planet that is uh, coming between us and the star. The other one is to uh, detect whether there are any oscillations in the, in the period and things like that. So there are certain indirect ways of observing uh, whether there is an uh, exoplanet or not. And once you know about an exoplanet, if it transits a star, you can actually try and detect uh, the spectra of light that come from it, from there. And then we can determine roughly the kind of composition, etc. it has. So this is a very hit and miss kind of thing. It, it basically, uh, we can do this only if the plane of the uh, orbit of this exoplanet is exactly between us and its parent star. So we have detected thousands of exoplanets, but we have missed millions because they are not so inclined. So the uh, statistical likelihood is basically one in, I don't know, at least thousands or maybe millions. And yet we have found thousands. Now, when it comes to the gravitational anomaly that affects uh, the orbit of various, uh, uh, of Pluto, etc. So we have detected that there seems to be something massive beyond the orbit of Pluto that is causing certain uh, Kuiper belt objects to have uh, strange inclinations and it's behaving, uh, it's causing them to behave strangely. So there is the possibility that something is lurking out there, but we are talking about something massive, but something dark and that's so far away and there is nothing that, that it is transiting. So if there was something between the earth and the sun, then we could observe it transiting the sun and it would be illuminated by the sun's light. But if something is that far away, way beyond the orbit of Pluto, then the sun's light over there is extremely dim. And if it is a darker body or a redder body, it's almost impossible to detect it at such an incredible distance. And there is even the hypothesis that it could be <laughs> a primordial black hole of, of some sort, in which case it's absolutely impossible to detect it. And yet it would have the same gravitational effect as a planet of the same mass. And these are the reasons why it is so hard to detect it. We may never be able to detect it, even if it does exist. Uh, the planets that have been detected thus far have been gas giants. And Pluto it's, itself is quite bright because its, it's, uh, it's uh, surface is quite icy and very reflective. So the objects we have been able to detect thus far have been very bright, either large and bright or small and shiny. And it is known that there are certain objects that are that are quite dark. That are full of uh, that are coated with hydrocarbons of some kind. Some of these uh, are full of uh, carboniferous material, etc. And these would be quite dark. So these are some of the reasons why uh, it's very hard to detect an object like that, especially at such a large distance away, way beyond the orbit of Pluto. So we may be able to find it if it does exist, or we may perhaps never be able to find it. If we do find it, it will be through great through a great deal of luck more than anything else.